Welcome to your Epidemiology and Biostatistics podcast. I'm your host, Christopher A. Clark. Today we're talking about Between Observer Variability and Cohen's Kappa. Before we talk about that, though, let's get a message from our sponsors. Casper Mattress. It's a mattress. We always want to be measuring reliability of our testing. The reported variability of a clinical instrument is often based upon a single examiner's flawlessly conducting the test under ideal conditions. However, if there's any part of this procedure that depends on an observation by a human observer, then there'll be between observer variability. Inter-observer reliability. Repeatability of a measurement when different examiners perform a procedure is often unknown or not reported. Inter-observer reliability can be classified by a couple different systems, exact, within a range or within limits, or as well as grading different types of disease. And that can be used for a lot, everything pretty much we do in clinic. That could be measuring the pressures of your, your eyes for, for, gold, for glaucoma. That could be our refractive error measurements, say myopia or astigmatism. That can affect our ability to measure the cup to disc ratios for things like glaucoma, or to grade the classification of the disease like diabetes and how much retinopathy we have in the eye. Well, here's an example of exact agreement of reliability. We have two measurements on 10 patients by two doctors. So they went through and they measured pressures on each patient, one at a time, all 10 of them. What we see here is on an exact measurement where they get exactly the same thing, that actually only happens about 40% of the time in this example. So in patients three, five, seven, and nine, they got exactly the same measurement. However, on the other patients, they did not measure the exact same thing. So we can actually measure that for our measurement of agreement, we can say 4 over 10, or they had 40% agreement. Well, let's think about it within limits. Within limits means it's over a range of measurements, in this case, plus or minus 1 millimeter. So let's look at example 1. It's the same measurements as before. In example 1, the first optometrist got 15, the second optometrist got 16. That's within 1 millimeter, uh, one millimeter of mercury, so they agreed in this situation. This is within limits again, so within a range. Once we do that within range, what we discover is the two doctors are about 80% within agreement. So they got 8 out of 10, so that's 80% agreement. We also, though, do this for grading of various diseases. Many clinical observer observations use grading scales, which are totally based on observational experience of the clinician. Novice cl clinicians are often given the impression that these grades are actual measurements with a documented variance. They are not. What is the inner observer reliability across grades? Well, here's an example of measuring the cells within the anterior chamber of the eye. We've got doctor number one at the top and number, doctor number two in the, in the vertical axis. And we have different grades of that. There could be no cells in the anterior chamber, in which case it's negative, which we can see on the upper left-hand corner. And they could have, as far as that, increasing levels of cells graded from one, two, and three. Our total number of patients we saw was 100 that we've graded, and each doctor went through and graded the amount of cells on all 100 patients. Well, when we want to figure out that inner observer reliability, we actually want to see how many they got right. So and there's four categories here, and across the horizontal axis, or the, the, the cross-correlation axis, we see the numbers they got right. They both agreed on negative 55 times on 55 of the patients. They agreed on grade one four times, they agreed on grade two four times, and they agreed, uh, agreed on grade three three times. So we total those all up, it's 66 patients they agreed on. That means their integrator reliability, or their Cohen Kappa, is 66, 0. 0.66, 66 divided by 100. And that's what Cohen's Kappa actually is. It's really just the percentage of time that the two graders agree with each other. A Kappa score, or Cohen's Kappa, or Fleiss Kappa, and that can be determined by categorical data, usually typically an agreement of plus or minus one, or such as normal versus diseased. It can also be used in various other aspects. Now a kappa less than 0.6 is considered to be weak, whereas a kappa greater than 0.8 is usually considered excellent and acceptable. Well, we do that same thing all the time, both in your classwork as well as in the real world with patients. Here's an example of that same thing, evaluating the optic disc size for glaucoma. What we can see is the intra-observer and the inter-observer. The intra-observer is actually the measurement of themselves. So one optometrist repeatedly grades 
the same optic nerves, so they're measuring how good they are at the, measuring themselves, and the inter-observer, that's where we compare one optometrist or one ophthalmologist to another. What we see overall is there's a fairly good intra-observer. That means within yourself, you'll consistently grade the cup the same size, about 80% of the time, once you get experience and you're no longer an optometry student. However, if you're a resident, you have less training, so you're not quite as good. Now we start to look at the inter-observer gradient. That's between doctors. There's actually a fairly low grade. Doesn't matter if you're an ophthalmologist, an optometrist, a resident, or an expert. You're only actually, between graders, you're actually only measuring the cup to disc about half the time correct, the same. So that's another example of where we have integrator optic disc evaluations. Now let's look at another scale. Diabetic retinopathy has an increasing level of retinopathy. They can have the di diabetic severity, so that could be from mild, moderate to severe, or it could be the presence or absence of diabetic macular edema. Here's another example where we actually have the scale system where we have actually a relatively low Cohen's kappa. Uh, between the retinal specialists even, they're, at best they're doing is 60% of the time they're measuring the same thing or su suggesting that they're in the same group, whether it's the severity of the retinopathy or the presence or absence of macular edema. And it gets even worse if you're a non-specialist in the retinal area. The bottom line. Know how to compute reliability of grading differences across doctors. Know differences between exact agreement and agreement within limits. And know what kappa values are good and which ones are not. Thank you very much.